All right, hope everyone's doing well. So, yeah, as you know, I've been I've been trading the spy for the past few days, and or maybe the past week. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I really I'm enjoyed trading e mini as well. It's just to keep it really simple. I don't want to go into too much detail, just because I'm running out of time as it is. I. I just wanted to practice scaling in, scaling out of trades, and it's really, I think one of the, if you want to be the most profitable, the best way is to be very, very consistent, and the easiest way to be very consistent is to be able to trade, you know, however small or however, the, the, the ability to have a lot of flexibility, and, you know, I have to say right now I'm trading really, really small, but... You know, it's kind of neat because I'm, you know, it's very consistent, and when you look at the end of the day, it, you know, it, it's it's impressive. You know, it, it can kind of be impressive in a way. It's and one of the reasons for that is I think most people, when they look at a chart, they inevitably they invariably they know what to do. I think the the issue is, sorry, I had to stand up for a second. The issue is that they are they become too emotional with what they're doing. They they really they care too much. So the ability to get to the I don't care size really becomes effective. So anyways, you know, kind of an example of what I you know what I did. You know, arguably I went short in here and I arguably should have held and just gotten out over here. But, you know, I didn't do that. I got out somewhere over here and you know, I figured there'd be buyers below here, so I ended up buying this low and scaling in. I don't remember, I think 20 cents lower, and you know, I used a very wide stop somewhere all the way down here, and I was planning on actually buying above a second entry, buy, you know, kind of what Al talks about, you know, buy more, buy more lower, double position, and get out somewhere up here, but. Uh, you know, as it worked out, and ended up just reversing it sharply. So I just, you know, kind of bought more as it went up. But uh, that's kind of an example of what, you know, not, you know, my real goal. I still want to trade always in, but it's kind of funny because now that I have so much flexibility, I'm finding myself doing, you know, different things, and it's actually, you know, I'm really enjoying it. So I don't want to get too much detail of that. So one thing, you know, what I've been doing. You know, I've been trading the the e, I've been trading the spider, but watching the e mini chart because you know here's here's the spider, here's the e mini, they're nearly identical, and I've just been you know, for instance, here's the e mini, I'd see bar two close, and I'd say okay, I want to buy that close, I'm gonna stop down here, so I quickly I just click buy the market as soon as it closes, go over here, see what this value is, and just put my stop one tick below. But anyways, I don't want to get too wrapped up in all that. So coming into today, we've got resistance over here. So, you know, tails on top, bears made money selling this high. So more likely we're in a leg in the trading range, another tail, kind of an inside bar, closed under this high, full breakout, bad follow through. This probably looks like a leg in the trading range. If it is a trading range, bulls will be disappointed. So we'll probably get some sort of deep pullback, maybe even you know, close this gap, maybe even double bottom. You know, if you were in Al's room, you know, you saw Al had a line right here or over at this low. That was because he was expecting price to fall below it because that's what trading ranges do. So, anyways, you know, arguably a bull trend, trend line break, tight channel. So somewhere over here. You know, if I was trading always in, I'd get out, you know, where would I get out? Probably below here, maybe below this bar or on this close, you know, certainly above this high. But, uh, you know, the reason I say below probably this bar is when you get a breakout above an obvious resistance point, you really want a strong breakout, and we didn't get that. Then we're getting, you know, a pretty tight channel down, so you have to wonder, are we always in the short? Is this kind of a parabolic buy climax? You know, 
I don't, yeah, I don't know how you don't draw it, but it's, you know, we channeled up, we got a bull breakout, maybe a second leg trap. We're at obvious resistance, so, but it's not clearly always in short because there's tails on the bottom. You know, we're getting a lot of bear bars, but big tails. Then we get this bull breakout. Well, a lot of times, you know, now we're battling over, you know, maybe the bulls either need a strong breakout or a breakout pullback by. You know, the bears just see this as a test of this gap, so the measuring gap right here. And then we closed it over here. And now we got arguably a second inch or short. You can call it a triangle. And maybe a wedge. One, two, three. And, you know, more sideways. Over here, arguably a double top, lower, high, mid to trend reversal. Right here. So I think a lot of bulls get out below this bar. Clearly, bears are selling. You know, aggressive bears short below. But, you know, over here, clearly always in short here. Probably going for lower, at least a second leg down. But big tails, so we may have a deep pullback. Obvious magnet this high. We closed it yesterday. And now we're starting to pull back and we're testing it down. Still, you know, strong enough breakout may get three pushes down. So maybe something like this. One, two, three. You know, no real, you know, really no clear place for. These are all minor reversals. No clear place for always in bears to get out. You know, do they get out above this high? Probably not. Do they get out here? Probably not because it's, you know, it's very high in the trade. It's very high into resistance, and bears are probably selling at this high, so it doesn't really make sense to get out there if you're a bear. And then we get the strong bear breakout. So you can call it a you know, whatever you want to call it, maybe a, you know, it's a bear breakout below a bear channel, but as you know, most of those failed. Try to get a wedge bottom. So it's kind of consecutive bottom attempts. You know, here, here, you know, we try to get a wedge. We got a bear breakout. So we may very well get two more pushes down. So first push and maybe this, well, and we didn't, but First push, maybe second push down, or maybe we get three pushes down, first, second, third. You know, but regardless, I think this will be an exhaustion gap. You know, you really have to ask yourself, okay, you know, what's an obvious magnet? High of the day, open of the day. We've already below that. High of the day. Let me turn my snap mode on. Here we go. High of the day to here. We're well below that. So next, maybe in this spike down. We're very close to that, the entire range of the spike down. We're not too far from it, you know, maybe four points below that. So maybe, you know, the middle of this trading range right here. So a lot of times when you get a trading range after a move down, it can sometimes be the middle. So as you can see, we're very close. We're at yesterday's close. And we really, if the bears really wanted to seal the deal, and make it clear, clearly always in and clearly going lower, they should have gotten a second bar like this. You know, there's a reason this bar looks like that, and that's because it's it's confusion. It makes here, yeah, strong enough for a second leg. The bears really want, you know, two bars in a row that are huge. You know, maybe... Not really any good examples of that, but they want they want to see something like this here, here. Now obviously this is, you know, ignore context, this is extremely climactic, but big bear bar, another big bear bar. But then, you know, as you can see, we get a low one short. So many bulls wanted to buy the low one that we reversed up strongly. And I, I think the bears will make money. The bulls will make money probably buying this low. And we get three bars up, clearly always in long. First target this high, this low, you know, probably we may even get back to the open of the day or even this low. If you're in the room, you heard Al say that a bear who sells this low probably will make money. And that's what happened in here. They got out without a loss and they'll, they may get all the way up to here. So at some point, clearly always in long, clearly probably going up for the second leg, but it's getting climactic. A lot of bull bars. 
it's you know quite it's well, one two three four five six, eight or nine bar micro channel you can argue a double top you know maybe a I wouldn't really call it a low two short but you can now we got a second inch short but again we have magnets above so it's a small pullback trend probably not that many sellers below and we may you know end up testing down here at, at the best and then we got you know full breakout test of the top of this channel spike pullback channel so this is the start of the channel we tested up to it we'll probably get to the open of the day and you can see we went to the open of the day and we went one tick above the open of the day and then then we got this bar you know at some point you get out here, uh, probably. I think a lot of always in bears will because it's the second entry short at the open of the day. And you have to ask yourself, what's the most likely outcome? Are we going to close at the open of the day or close up at the high of the day? And this is very parabolic. You know, one, it's not really clear, but it could be a second leg trap. You're getting tails on top. So I think it's okay to get out and take profits. Then we're starting to sell off. You know, a good bear good bear bar for the bears are we always in short probably not you know it may be if the bears if the bears can get a third consecutive bear bar that looks like this then yes you know if they can get a bear bar that looks like this then absolutely but you know let's see and then we get the small little tail so at that point probably always in short but again i say that with hesitation because it's really not that clear you know, some bears will sell, and they'll be very quick to get out above a bull bar. Other bears will sell. Oh, sorry. Some bears will sell and be very quick to get out. Other bears will say, gee, they probably need one more bear bar. You know, and then we get this bar. Well, does that count for one more bear bar? Probably not. You know, I say, yes, it, it is one more bear bar, but look where it was. Huge tail on the bottom, which means... A lot of bulls were buying at 50% and buying lower. So, you know, I think this is going to lead to maybe a second leg down. But it's not that clear. And then we get this bar, you know, do you buy above it? Well, you can if you use a stop down here. But strong enough sell off, strong enough move down, probably at least a second leg. And that's what happened here. You can see a lot of bears. Those, they sold this high at 525. They sold more at one point higher at 650 or 625, and they got filled and they scalped out. And then look what happened. Then went sideways in the close. And this is one of those things that's kind of dangerous, you know. During the day, I was I was thinking you can probably make money if you buy above this bar, stop down here, and you buy more lower. But that's not that simple. And this is the exact reason why. A lot of times, let me find one. We had an obvious one. Yeah, okay, so here's, here's this is kind of like one. High two buy, but may get a deep pullback. So you buy above this bar, put your stop down here, and then you buy more above a bull bar here. And then you get out up here. Well, late in the day, there's always the risk that, that you run out of time so I think a lot of bulls that would do that that did that were probably more interested in simply buying above and buying lower to get out at break even on the entire trade than they were to scale in and make a profit so really not a lot to say about today you know for always in I'll repeat it always in long on bar one I would not buy above or close of bar one Always in, you know, do you buy bar two? Maybe. I think it's okay to buy bar two. But stop down here. When did it clearly become always in long? Probably bar three, but, you know, again, looks like a leg in a trading range, so maybe you buy this close. You buy, you know, maybe you buy this close, maybe you buy this low, buy this close. But then when you get up to here, you've got to think about getting out. You're at resistance. The high of, I guess, Thursday. So I'd get out below this bar or above this bar. You know. Is it always in short over here? I don't know. Uh, you know, arguably it's always in short. Bear breakout. 
you know, minimum follow through. But it looks like a leg in a trading range. And I guess, you know, so okay, so maybe you sell this. If you sold down in here, you know, you probably get out. I think you definitely get out above this bar and aggressive bulls buy. But, you know, what do they do here? Do they get out below this bar? Probably not. They, some might, but probably not. Just because, you know, if they, if theoretically, but if theoretically bears just get out here, they may not get short again here, but you can see it's confusing, and that's, you know, tri tight trading ranges are not good for always in trading, so you have to be careful. So where did it become clearly always in short? During this bar, you know. Arguably, you could sell below this bar, but I think, I think bulls definitely get out below here. But here's where it clearly, clearly became always in short. And, you know, really no, no clear place to get out. If a bull gets out above this bar, you know, they got to get short again. You know, here, maybe during this bar. But uh, I probably wouldn't get out there. If I was trading just strictly always in. And then where did the bulls get out? Well, you know, maybe they get out above this high. I probably get out above here. You know, thinking this gap's going to close. And at some point, you see three bars up, four bars up. you got to conclude it's always in long, so you buy for your stop somewhere down here. You know, do you get out below here? Probably not. You've got to think moving average probably will be support. You may get a 50% pullback and then a move up, but I wouldn't get out below here. And then you get the bull breakout. You know, micro channel, first reversal down, which failed, which it did, and we got a new high. We're at, we're at obvious targets. The high of this channel, so spiking channel, the open of the day. Second entry short, I'd get out probably below this bar. If I didn't get out on this bar, I'd probably get out certainly on this close. And, you know, what do you do? If you're aggressive, you know, maybe you sell this close, stop up here. You know, even better, you sell this high, but that's a hard thing to do. And then, you know, if, if, you, if you understand what's going on, big down, big up, You'd sell this high, you'd scalp out somewhere down here. Otherwise, I think you just, I just, if I was trading strict always in and I went short here or above this high, I'd get out above this bar and just call it a day. I mean, really not a lot left in the day. If you did it right, you made a fair enough amount of points. So I would just, yeah, I'd just call it a day. All right. Uh, comment below or on Al's website if you have any questions. And, so comment in the comment section of the YouTube channel or if you go to brooksprice.com and you click the forums and you click, uh, I believe it's called tra Trading Journals, you'll see my username, BC Wolf Trading Journal, called something like that. You'll see it at the top. Click on it, just comment on that. If you want, you know, the easiest way to get a response from me is to either message me on the Brooks Price Action trading course, or I'm sorry, sorry, I'm getting kind of tired, message me on the brookspriceaction.com or message me or just comment in the YouTube section. But all right, thanks. Have a great night or a great rest of the day.